Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to our brand new group. <laughs> no leakers are here, thankfully. <laughs> and they will be going over, you know, the setup that I outlined, you know, with you guys prior to this move taking place, right? So we aren't looking at hindsight data right now. Right now we are looking at, you know, the market bending to our will, if you must. Right? So this is actually, you know, the first model, right? That I, I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Very, you know, interesting, I know. And it's very straight to the point. And it's not hard to understand, right? Because you guys understand what sequential SMT is already, right? And you guys see it working already, correct? Yes, you do. You see it working. I mean, you know that this isn't a scam. This, this, You see it happening, right? It's not just me trading it and posting it, right? And then just, you know, talking about it in hindsight data. When I talk about these things, right, it's with real-time charts. Literally, real-time charts. It's me showing, it's, I'm teaching you in real time. So it's like, I expect price to do this, right? At this time, literally, right? We we talked about which days do we expect price to make the low of the week? Either Wednesday or Thursday, didn't we? And what would, you know, allow us to, you know, confirm that price is actually, you know, ready to take off, ready to move, ready to reverse, right? We said that we wanted to see price trade below this low right here. You remember this exact low, right? And we wanted to see price just wick into this wick, right? Just trade into the, you know, the, op the opening of this candle, which is a rejection block. And we wanted to see price break below the 50% of this range, right? And we saw that happen. And we saw that exact thing happen, right? So we had price making the low of the week on Wednesday. And we expected price to go higher, right? Taking out these highs. And do you know like what else is interesting? We, ex we expected SMT to form as well as at these highs. So we expected the S&P 500 to take out these highs and the NASDAQ to not take this high out, right? And what happened? Exactly what we talked about. Look at that. So we had NASDAQ dropping below this low right here. Which this was the second second week of the month. This is the third week of the month, right? So we had price drop, take out the low of the second week of the month, even took out the low of the first week of the month as well. And then it just rallied after it created sequential SMT. So I always get these questions, you know, when is a a m a m AMDX valid? When is XAMD valid, right? When? When should I use AMDX? When should I? It's not as, you know, simple as it's displayed in, you know, my first or and only YouTube video. No, it's not. Which is why we have this mentorship. Where we, we will go deeper into price, right? So here, we have price taking out this low. Right, taking out Tuesday's low. Meanwhile, he has failed to do so. And we predicted that this would happen. We forecasted this already. So this is sequential SMT. Whenever you have something like this, 
right? Whenever you have something like this, and I'm talking, and I'm specifically talking about the the monthly cycle right now, right? You know, you can get one explosive move that will cover the entire month's range. I'm talking about moves like that. These are the types of moves, you know, big moves, right? That leaves everyone behind, you know? Right now you have everyone on Twitter saying, oh, I don't trade this, there was nothing to trade, but they don't know this. They don't know what this is. They don't even know that CFS or SMT exists. They don't know what this is. No, <laughs> like I'm telling you, they do not know what this is, right? And as you guys can see, during the third week, and you know, this indicator makes it easy to see, right? During the third week, right? On the third day, do you see that? The third week, on the third day, we had price making the the low of, you know, this current week and forming the failure, the failure swing, which failed to run below this low on a Wednesday during the third week of the month. This is applicable to, you know, lower time frames and higher time frames. So whenever you have a Q3 that's situated in a Q3, such as this right now, and you have sequential SMT, right? So you need, for example, if this was the daily cycle, right? And this was London, this was the New York session, and this was 9 to 10.30 a.m. in the morning. If there was sequential SMT and it fell, you know, within this specific perimeter of price, then we could expect price to to take out, either take out all of the previous highs of the higher time frame cycle or form SMT with another asset class, which is the, which the asset that you're looking at is closely related to. So everything that I'm talking about, you know, it's probably boring, right? But it's time-based, right? You, you see candlesticks every day, but you don't pay attention to, you know, down here, which you need to. And, you know, I think, you know, this is amazing because like, you know, I made a, you know, I made this, you know, just because I want it to be easy to understand. Like the purpose of all of this, right, that I'm doing right now, what, what is it? Is to get you to, you know, be able to read price, you know, better or as good as me. And some of you will be better than me, obviously, right? Some of you will obviously be better than me in due time. But that is the goal, right? To get you guys saying, I don't want to, you know, I don't need day anymore. You know, going out, you know, starting your own, you know, business or whatever you're doing, right? So this is very important, right? And realize that here we had, you know, sequence or SMT right here. And this is important. Like, listen, right? And, you know, this will go over some of your heads. It will seem a bit advanced, but it's not. You know, when you come back and you rewatch the video, right, you'll see that this is in price. And remember, nothing in price is random. There is nothing in price that is random. So if you see something happening in price, take note of it, because it's going to happen again. And it happened before. Right? So we had... Price form sequential SMT here on which, you know, cycle, within which cycle? This is the monthly cycle. So there's sequential SMT here, right? And then take note, when you drop down to a, a lower cycle, right? You can see that right here, we had price take out the low of the London session shows here right these 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 are this lower time frame cycle is the weekly cycle right so the what you want to see you know like what you really want to see to get that in price right you want to see 
and it's a sequence, right? You want to see SMT. Take note, this is a seat. No one knows this. <laughs> oh my God, it's amazing. So you want to see SMT, right? You want to see SMT on your higher time frame cycle, right? Which is this right now. So you have sequential SMT. Let me change this. You want to see sequential SMT on your higher time frame cycle, right? And then, and this is like the tricky part, right? And then you want to see no SMT, right? You don't want to see any type of SMT on the cycle that's lower than this that, that you're going to be looking at. Right, so no SMT, and I, we'll call this the mid range cycle or the mid time frame cycle. Let's say the mid time frame cycle, right? So you have the higher time frame cycle, mid time frame cycle, you have a lower time frame cycle. And the reason for this is because you need to have three, right? See, is that the algorithm, you know, it cracks correlation, gets in line, cracks it again, and boom, it's three, right? People always wonder why is three six not important. Three, why is three important, right? Okay, you're gonna know. In due time, we will get into things like that. But look at this. This lesson right now is like this is worth, you know, a lot. And no one knows this. <laughs> no one knows this. And you know, people will see this in practice. They they won't even like take note of this. They can't see this without sequential, without like focusing on sequential SMT. And you can't see sequential SMT if you're not looking at quarterly theory. So we have sequential SMT on a higher time frame cycle, right? You need three, right? For precision, you need three. You don't really need. You can you could have like traded this like just by looking at the four hour you know time frame just with just one sequential you know SMT but you'll probably you probably you know went down into a drawdown or something but you know if you don't want if you don't like drawdown you know then this is you know what you want to do right and if it seems complicated over time it will cease you know to be that way and, you know, using this method, we, you're trying to get explosive moves, and I'm showing you how explosive moves actually form, right? First, you have the higher time for cycle crack correlation, right, which is shown through sequential SMT, right? So once you're on a higher time from cycle and you see sequential SMT, you don't go in the market yet to trade, Right? Afterwards, you look at the mid time frame cycle. So in this case, the higher time frame cycle, the higher time frame cycle would be the monthly cycle, right? The monthly cycle, which is, you know, the monthly cycle is comprised of four weeks, right? And the mid time frame cycle would be The weekly cycle, which is comprised of four the four sessions of the day, right? So pay attention to this. Like look at this for a moment, right? Like study this. Let me give you like fifteen seconds. Okay, now that you've done that, we'll talk about the lower time frame cycle now. So now you need a lower time frame cycle for this to function. And the lower time frame cycle, right? It could be one cycle lower than this, or you know, minimum or maximum two cycles lower than this. So you have a monthly cycle, high time frame cycle, then you have a you know, a mid time frame cycle, which is the weekly cycle. So you need to see SMT, no SMT, and then on a lower time frame cycle, you need to see SMT.
right here, right? You can see this, pretty sure. So you can see right here, price took out the low of London, right? But before it actually rallied, like what really gave price that push, right? Look at this. I you go down to the you need the five minute time frame for this. Which is this is where we're we'll be using the 90 minute cycles, right? Which I have no idea why it's not working. Why it's not popping up. But anyways, you know, until that happens. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Perfect. So right here, you can, you guys can see, right? And this is a sequence. So right here, you can see we have sequential SMT on the 90 minute cycle, which is, which was within the fourth session of the day, which is reversal. Do you see what I'm showing you right now? So we have a higher time frame cycle. You know, and the, the lower time frame cycle below that, which we would consider as the mid time frame cycle, right? We have a, you know, we have no SMT. So first we have a cracking correlation on the higher time frame cycle, you know, which would, you know, that's where you would be comfortable with beginning to looking for your setup. Right, that's when you start to look for your setup. So if you're looking at the monthly cycle and you see a cracking correlation, then you'll be waiting for you know lower time frame confirmation. Right? So here we could see that this is the this was the low of the week, right? Which was formed on a Wednesday. And you're looking at this right now, you're like Oh, this is good. Like, this is very good. We're not done. <laughs> We're definitely not done yet. Right? So we had this low formed on a Wednesday, which was, you know, which is when we had a high impact news event. You guys remember the high impact news event that we had, right? Which was, I believe it was 2 p.m. Right? yesterday. So we had FOMC 2 p.m. So now we're digging into price again, right? So 2 p.m. would be around here, right? This candle. And the opening price of this candle is this. BC now. Some of you probably can, you know, see where I'm getting, getting at. So this right now is this is the opening price this is the opening price of a high impact news event So the opening price of high impact news events specifically, right? It's not just the opening price of, you know, this specific time per se, right? When there's the opening price of a high impact news event, you know, it price will react to it, right? Price will react to it as it did here, right? So Meanwhile, price was trading here. You, you probably had people that were short, equity traders that were short. But we, we know, right? Well, you know now, 
opinion, right? This would act as a, you know, a level of support. And it doesn't matter if it's like 8.30, right? Once you have, you know, sequence or SMT below this, then it functions as how, you know, you would want a order block to function. But an order block doesn't really function like this, right? And we'll eventually get to that. So this is the opening price of a high impact news event. So we had sequential SMT on the higher time frame. Then we had the time frame below that, no sequential SMT. And then below that we had right after the high impact news event releases, which is why I always say wait for high impact news events. You know, we just trade, but just trade high impact news events. That's when you see the best trades form. So we had price trade down into this high impact news event while I kid you not, right? While trading below, right here is the, this is the true open, right? This opening price right here, which is this exact price, right? This is the exact price as, the opening price as of the high impact news event. And remember what I told you guys before, that whenever you see price break above a true open after there is sequential SMT, then that true open will act as support. And if you see price break below it, and there is a bearish sequential SMT, price will act as resistance. Right? Everything that I'm talking about is new. You've never heard about this before. It's not me taking Michael's stuff. And no, it's literally brand new things. You know, and it's no effort cause that this is still nothing. This is still nothing. And if you go in your charts and you, you know, you study these things, right? We're looking at specific openings of price. That's what we're looking at. Points of price at specific times. So when, you know, whichever, you know, you, this is, and right now, this is why the 90 minute cycle is so important, right? And remember when you're using the 90 minute cycle, you need to be on the five minute time frame. And now you guys could, can see, right? Where I turn my new week opening gap indicator on. And you guys can see the price literally touched it and rallied too. Right? So this new week opening gap, right? It validates this fair value gap. And you guys realize that this is like one of the first, you know, we barely talk about fair value gaps that much. It validates this fair value gap, right? Because, right? It is within this fair value gap. And remember, we prefer balanced price ranges over fair value gaps. You see that? So this is a balanced price range right here. Let me draw this as well. I believe I could just remove this. I have to draw the fair value gap. Right, I could just draw the balance price range. Right, so this is a balanced price range. We had price form sequence or SMT shift market structure to the upside. Right, and when price traded above this height, it became a breaker. And why did it become a breaker? Then? This is a high probability breaker, right? What you're going to be seeing right now. This is a high probability breaker. Why is that so? Because the opening price of this candle, which is a breaker, like if you ask any person that is, you know, studies ICT, 
and those ICTs work. This is a breaker, right? Looking back in past second, you can see that this was a breaker. And function as a breaker, right? So we had price. Right, price traded within this breaker. Hold on. Price dropped into this breaker, and what made this breaker a breaker? Answer: What made it an actual breaker? Like, why is this even a breaker? Why would we consider this a breaker? Do you see like the levels? that we went through, like, do you see everything that we literally, you know, you know, did to come to this conclusion? If you, listen, if you follow all of this, you know, the rules or everything that I'm showing you right now, your hit rate will probably be like 90%. Like, you'll probably have to wait and you'll probably be taking two to three trades per week. But your hit rate will literally be 90%, 80% at least. Like, if you lose, that's on you. Right? So, remember, this segment of price action that we're actually looking at, right? This is the five-minute time frame. And it doesn't scare us that it's, you know, not... This is not really a lower time frame, you know, like a really low, low time frame, you know, because we can function on the 15 second, the one minute, but, you know, no one should really go below the one minute because it's not necessary. You could even just be functioning, you know, focusing on the five minute time frame and you'll be good. Right? So we had price wick down into this breaker, which is the last up close candle before price takes the quality to the downside. More, you know, spe more specifically, it is the last up close candle before there is sequential SMT. Right? Above a new week opening gap. So we have this new week opening gap here, right? Which this is like the. This right here, right? If you have a new week opening gap, write this down. If you have a new week opening gap, right? That's in line, you know, with a fair value gap after there has been sequential SMT. That's a, that right there's a model by itself, right? And you do not have to, you know, draw these out all the time, right? You. You don't have to draw these out all the time, right? You don't have to manually do it, right? You could, you just come here and this is the settings that I use, right? And you can pause the video and look at this again, right? I have a minimum 20 of them in my charts at all times. So we had price trade down into this. Trade into new, the new week opening gap, right? And that's what validates this. Right, this balance price range. So it would look like this, you know, if you're just looking at the raw chart. But when you apply this, everything just becomes better. And pay attention to the opening price of the high impact newsman. All of these things, you know, come together and it just makes the breaker high probability. It makes this balance price range high probability. It makes this fair value gap high probability, right? And the sequential SMT alone, you know, makes it high probability. So we had price, like say price was here. It broke down below the true open. So this will be the true open of this 90 minute cycle. Right? And we had sequential SMT due, you know, between Q2 and Q3 price ran below this low, but within, if you guys go back in your charts and you look at NQ, price did not run below this low, so it was a failure swing in NQ while this took liquidity. After a higher time frame sequence, SMT was formed. So 
right now this lesson this lesson has a numerous amount of gems right it has a lot of things that you could you could take out and you could put them by themselves and build a model it's not just one thing that i gave you I gave you the sequence that you should, you know, expect sequence for SMT, right? You need a lower time frame sequence for SMT, right? For to confirm the higher time frame one. So there will be literally sequence for SMTs that are there, but they won't be confirmed, right? So the algorithm will basically, at times, you know, create sequence for SMT, then there will be no confirmation and then it will just fail. There are times that that will happen. But whenever you have sequence of SMT in a higher time frame cycle, and then a lower time frame cycle as well, that confirms it. That's when it will work. More times than not 90% of the time. And if you have it happening like below like a new week opening gap that makes it even better. But you don't need a new week opening gap, but I'm just saying that it makes it better, right? So if you have like, you know, price functioning, you know, anywhere around a new week opening gap, you know, doing this sequential SMT, rallies above it, breaks market structure, there's a high impact news event that was right after, right? A news event was released preferably in that same quarter of in the 90 minute cycle, right? What do I mean by that? Confusing, I know. So right here, you can see that this is the second quarter, right? Of this 90, specific 90 minute cycle, right? The news was released here. News was released here, right? This is two. 2 p.m. It was released on this candle, right? We had price go above it, right? Go above this, drop below, turn to the 50% of this wick, then it dropped. After this, it created sequence for SMT. So what people usually do, right, is they think that whenever, right, there's a high impact news event that price just manipulates, right? And like right away, it doesn't manipulate right away because like what they think manipulation is is just you know price pushing above a high that's not manipulation manipulation is sequential smt that our manipulation is confirmed by sequential smt right so right here we had, we had people will probably be short here they push above this oh it's manipulation the news manipulated above this high and it dropped and they're you know they're probably adding to shorts, adding to shorts until the real manipulation happened, which is here. Sequential SMT. Then when did the sequential SMT happen? Right. Below the true open of this 90 minute cycle. That's when it happened. And you can even predict, like, of course you can predict when sequential SMT will happen. And we, you know, we start, we started to do that, but it's just like basic levels, right? So we had price drop, create sequential SMT, right? And for example, right, for me, right, if I saw a price dropping like this, I treat the opening price of the high impact news event as how I would treat a true open. And, you know, funny enough, it's the same price of this true open right here. Do you see that? <laughs> It's like, isn't a, this isn't even a joke, bro. Like, do you see this? This price right here, the opening of this candle right here, it is what? It, this is the true open of this 90 minute cycle. What's the opening price of where the new, the high impact news event happened? That formed the high probability breaker. When did it happen? It happened at two o'clock at the same price of the true open of this 90 minute cycle right so i love the 90 minute cycle and if you're using the 90 minute cycles then you know you're strictly functioning within a five minute time frame 
and you know a lot of you guys are probably like you know really good already with the one minute time frame but you you don't need to be you know going below the five minute time frame right at all it will save you a lot of stress right so like for example you know you could you you probably missed this move but when price fell back here and we have this new week opening gap overlapping this breaker and this balance price range after the sequential SMT reacting to the opening price of this high impact news event reacting to the price of the true open of the nine minute cycle as well while there is a higher time frame cycle sequential SMT that's it that's literally it right and let me go back up to the four hour time frame oh just don't pay attention to this right now <laughs> right and remember we talked about this rejection block as well so now i'm going to drop that down look what happened remember we talked i talked about this rejection block specifically right this right here what happened when pro where did the sequence of SMT form? Like literally right below it. Look at that. Price dropped into the higher time frame PDRA, which we need a higher time frame PDRA, right? Price, this is a four hour higher time frame PDRA, right? And you could use this, right, on the 50 minute time frame. But like we're just getting into the you know, specifics right now. So price fell below it and the sequence of SMT occur right while dipping into this PDRA. Price rallied. Right? Once price break above this high and why, you know, this I didn't say break above this high. Why not? Because this is the high, you know, this is the candle that was formed by the opening by the high impact news event. You understand now this was the candle that, and this could have been 8 30 news it doesn't make a difference could be 8 30 news but it doesn't make a difference right and you know we are right now in this price action we would be below the true day open as well so everything right was pointing to you know just go up that like this was the last straw literally so the reason why this break like this was the real break of markets not not even this right i wouldn't be looking at this this is the high i would be looking at first of all this is above the new opening gap which you don't really need but it you know it helps it really helps right so we had price trade down into this candle then rally just a week down in the candle like look at it if you enter it even here i just stop was here look at that it's gone <laughs> like it's literally gone that's like what 20 hours i don't even i don't even know it's gone and like literally i gave you guys this egg look you see this red line 49 49.65.25 you, you you got this level right and we were we always talk about sequential smt i focus on new week opening gaps and new day opening gaps but you don't need them right but whenever they are there, it's like you just, you know, I will turn my risk up a bit. So if I usually risk like 2%, then now it's 3.5. All right. It's like a no brainer. Like whenever I see something like this, I see a breaker overlap with a new week opening gap after sequential SMT, after dipping into a higher time frame PDRE. So I hope that you guys, you know, took something from this today. I hope that you guys learned something.
like that's just it just learn something because like whatever i talk i talk about is not me feeding you bullshit it's not me you know feeding you hindsight data literally it's not it's not me like telling you garbage it's t i'm telling you about the r real price we're function we're focused on time <laughs> it's time right specific opens of price like what why is this candle important because of this time right because of the, this news event open here which made this candle significant why is this level important because of this opening of price because of this new week opening gap why right and remember look at this price usually and and this is like specifically talking about a 90 minute cycle so price usually creates sequential smt right whenever there is a high impact news event which you can you can go and study this too so you will more times than not even if this was another quarter right and there was a high impact news event there right and you see price leave this low right here rally up and then form sequential smt here after a higher time frame you know cycles sequential smt then you can expect price to rally and you guys remember how i taught you guys you know how you can use standard deviations to you know as a stop for turtle soup right so if you see sequential smt you know forming within a higher time frame pdra so which is what this line is right price trade below it is a higher time frame pdra so the swing low to the swing high one and standard deviation this will be your stop and so i've shown you guys this multiple times right so your stop will be here and you enter below the flow right if you you know like precision you could enter like 0.25 right here and your stop will be here if price gets here that's like 10 hours <laughs> like you know once you get comfortable with that you know that is literally you know how you could get and yeah so i think that should be enough for today i've been talking for over 40 minutes i believe this one was a long one honestly but i hope that you glean something from this right and understand that this is not me talking about just <laughs> random you know chart charts it's just hindsight data we talk about this before and we do this on a weekly basis right every week you know we do this and i hope that you know you glean from this and i hope that you you know take my advice you know go back in your charts and back this there will be a time when you will become crazy right you'll become you just you just see price just within a range, like literally, and everyone's like, price is consolidating. Like price is just consolidating right here. And then you literally know that if price runs above this high, it's SMT. Like that that will be what you're doing. Price runs above this high. I'll expect NQ to run above this high. But and ES won't run above this high. So ES will form you're anticipating failure swings. That's crazy. Okay. And Again, this is elementary stuff. I can't talk about everything that I want to talk about in one video. But anyways, yes, I think I should go now. I've overstayed my welcome. <laughs> so I'll see you guys again. You already know what time we're going to be meeting, right? For sure. Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's my birthday. I don't know if I'll be doing something Saturday, but if I'm not, I will be here. I don't like doing things at all. So like my birthday, I treat it, I treat it as a normal day. 
I don't really care, to be honest. And I'm, you know, getting old right now, so I just want to like focus on the gym and you know reading stuff like that, trying to, you know, just be better at you know what I am good at already. So, anyways, have a wonderful night, and I'll talk to you guys soon.